what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who have joined as Lions. So a massive shout out to, let's get a bit close to my tiny letters, uh, W-T-B-O-F-N-C. Anaconda, Anaconda Malt Liquor 17, Daz Studio 78, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Rep Priestley, Way Twins, or We Twins, uh, Contraption, Windrider, All People, Free People, and Eagle Plane and Anchor. So a massive shout out of appreciation to all of you who have joined as a Lion Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member. Now we are joined in Discord and G Plus by Righteous Force, Paul Hall, Tenth Man, and Flatsoid. First of all, hello, good to have you. Good morning. Good to be here. Hello, hello. Good morning. Greetings to all. And greetings to everyone in Discord as well. Hello, Governor. Good. Looks like we have a lot. Looks like we have a lot of Globers in the Discord. Maybe they can chime in and explain the Black Swan to us today. Maybe we shall see. Any evidence of a physical sphere edge capable of geometric measurement? No, no sir. A G well, sphere. Definitely not. Like, my sphere that has three edges, three edges has my sphere, and wouldn't it have edges, so wouldn't be my sphere. That's my <laughs> so Is there any evidence well, that of didn't take physical long. geometric earth curve edge? So many edges. No, no edges on spheres. I'm sorry. Any evidence of earth curvature? Not from no. Galveston, Texas. Definitely not from South Africa. Any evidence of axial rotation? I sure don't see any indication that we are spinning. No, you'd have to be a sphere to have axial rotation, so no. Any so scientific evidence question, of then. gravity? Nah. I don't think people know what it is. We definitely know what it is if we had some scientific evidence for it. Is there any? No. No, certainly nobody knows what it is. <laughs> any evidence of the distance to the sun? Oh, go ahead. Whoever said that in Discord. Oh, no, I just wanted to ask if gravity has edges too. Oh, this, this black it's swan has driven you crazy already, we could tell. Can't wait. Uh, and like like a uh, sun, does it have edges too? Does it? Might it? Sorry, are we using okay. the sun to claim boats go over the edge of the sun? Or is that some fundamentalist globe head religious zealotry that you assert about how our earth works? I'm pretty sure it's not the sun that we're talking about when we talk about boats going over the edge of a sphere. Or buildings being blocked by the edge of a sphere. No, I think the sun might might have edges. That's fascinating. Maybe. And is there yes. any examples of the distance? Uh if you take if you count the edges and multiply them by the distance to your next uh pub. Shut up. Any single viable scientific hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology or astrophysics? 
No, because they don't use science. No. I've addressed this to them directly, and they refuse to answer. So, no, if they had it, they would be top of the list to answer, but they don't have it. Right, the R value. Any evidence of Earth radius? That would be just begging the question. Nope. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Again, I know. Differently. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without a container? Impossibility. Impossible. Although I did, did you mm. see Simon and Dan trying to answer this? What was Simon and Dan's response? A nuclear reactor. A nuclear reactor is evidence of gas pressure without a container? <laughs> yes. Wow. I actually posted a thing in Master B. You'll see it there. I actually commented. Can someone on the panel bring up a picture of a nuclear reactor for me, please? Is that possible? I want to have a look at it, see if it would be accurately described as a container. Let's have a little look. Was there any ancillary information to go along with his claim that a nuclear reactor is evidence of gas pressure without a container? It says it forms a barrier. It forms a barrier? Yep. Somehow that Dunks are argument. I don't know how, but very vague. scientific as well. What's the definition of a barrier? Here we go. Pressurized Something water. Something with edges. Pressurized water. What? Reacting reactor. <laughs> wow. Oh, which which bit's the nuclear reactor? Yo. Hey, Owen. No, sorry for being late. It's the bit on the left, the nuclear reactor. Anybody? Anybody uh, at all? With a vacuum in. Is is um is uh water pressurized water the same as gas? Looks like looks like a lot of containers there, Nathan. I, I'm just about to say the same thing, tenth man. So which bit is the gas pressure in that doesn't have containment? I don't I don't see anything in this diagram that shows <laughs> gas pressure without any containment. Can you show That's me? That's the whole point. This this looks very much like a container to me. Am I wrong? Maybe well, he's, even, it he's even got it written at the bottom of that image, containment structure. Where does it say that? Oh, yes, so it does. <laughs> containment, it says. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> can you scroll down a little bit, please, Righteous Force, just so I can get that on screen? <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so it even says on this diagram. Yeah, and even wait, wait, wait. Please tell me this was not given as proof of gas pressure without a container. Yes, by Simon yep. Dan, apparently. Wow. Where it says containment structure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even the cooling tower is a container. Uh, comedy of errors from Simon Dan. It's the second in a row where he's made himself look foolish. Chocolate, your timing is excellent. <laughs> I Did tried. You like your I song? walked. Did you like your I song, walked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. It was a good beat. <laughs> Thank you for finding it righteous. That's it. That concludes housekeeping. No, well, I missed all of it. Well, let's ask Zender directly. Hey, Zender, why is the horizon in the black swan photo? beyond where the horizon should be. Could you please explain? Where should it be? And what photo? Oh, please. <laughs> okay. Can someone post the Black Swan picture in live stream Discord, please? Oh, those are oil stations, which look like pirate boats. Not, not the, not. Don't worry about the, uh, the um, oil platforms. It's the horizon you're being asked about. 
but those look like pirate boats. Let's try it again. Let's not worry about the platform hill house. Let's worry about the horizon. That was what the question was about. Oh, that that photo. Okay, the the Paul Hall photo. Okay. Um. Yes, those look like pirate boats. One hundred. Last chance. Is there, last fine. chance. Is there that, last chance. Then he's it. not going to take part in the conversation anymore. We're asking you about the physical geometry of your sphere belief, and why a physical obstruction has been projected where it cannot be, debunking any notion that it is actually a physical sphere edge. Uh -huh. Which which edge? Like one of. It's not what I asked. Edges. It's not what I asked. Do you want to ask your question again, Paul? Like the the one of my song, like my sphere that has three edges. Yeah, you're not you're not going to take part in the conversation anymore. Yeah, so your no. rebuttal to this is to joke because you haven't got the slightest clue about the argument or the rebuttal. You haven't got a rebuttal, so you're going to sing us a little song instead. Excellent. This is your representation, Globers, which has spent the last half an hour pointing out that you've got no rebuttal to this, and Zinda comes along and sings you a song as a rebuttal. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. The Earth's not a sphere. It's been debunked. There is no response. A song isn't going to wash. Well, unless it's a swan song. Boom, boom. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, get used to this long protracted silences after we point out how they've got no response to the black swan argument. You say there's quite a few fundies in the uh, Discord server? Yeah, there was a few that I checked when I looked at it a minute ago. They might have disappeared by now, but there was some earlier. Have you all been contacting your priests about this? I do hope so. <laughs> virus? virus. <laughs> so, what confessional did they go to to contact their priest, Nathan? <laughs> Father, I have sinned. I have loomed the horizon above the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> for for looming, you must do 100 Hail Marys. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't work. Thank you. Virus, virus isn't here. He, he's usually chiming up. What's his explanation? <sighs> I like Sean Hawkins' explanation. He says, Nathan Oakley, there are no white swans. Doesn't even understand the analogy. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> there is no spoon. John. That's great. I've got to admit, I actually watch a bit of Sean Hawkins. Me and my wife watch him. Because he's so dumb. It really amuses both of us greatly watching his stupidity because he contradicts himself in one sentence quite frequently. So he'll say something that literally contradicts himself. For example, he said something about science not needing to be natural. Then he goes to the definition of science and reads out about how it's got to be natural. It's just brilliant. <laughs> I mean, it's really funny. You've got to watch Sean Hawkins. It's just funny as fuck because he's so thick. And that really does cheer me up of a day. Shout out to Alexander. El heliocentri trismo es una religión. Viva el debate sobre el tira plena el encanal de Nathan. Gracias. Really appreciate the super chat, Alexander. Sorry, I butch yeah. butchered the Spanish. So... So, that was the early bit. Oh, yeah, sorry. I got distracted trying to read that. So, so basically... Very rough. My, my early bird was great. Basically, you talk about some pretty, saying, pretty crazy shit. I had to turn you off because you were distracting me from setting up the show because of how crazy the show was. Crazy, the show? Yeah. Which part? Well, you were talking about divining influence from what you then later labeled as God and asking for guidance and things of that nature, which I was like... This is a bit heavy on, isn't it? It's like only at one o'clock in the one o'clock in the afternoon. Really? 
Well, I was I watched the like the Bible series for a long period, so I was very inspired. But yeah, this, I that. the I'm, super chat said uh, to my best of my Spanish. Uh, the heliocentric is a religion. Hooray or viva the debate on the flat Earth plane in the Nathan Oakley channel, basically. Cool. Um, how do you add, anybody who's got a better knowledge of the Jewish faith than me? There's a word that sort of looks a bit like karate, but it isn't that word. What's the word? Anybody? I don't want to say karate Jews for Judaism, but there's a channel I've been watching recently. He's also a subscriber here, and he has some really good religious debates. So he had a I don't know if it's accurate, but it was um, labelled as neo-Nazi Christian versus um, pacifist Jew or something like that. And uh, that was the one I watched this morning. And I've also watched the channel owner himself debate against various other Christians about the Jewish faith. Yesterday, it was about the legitimacy of Jesus Christ actually being the son of God. Now, while I don't necessarily agree with either side of the argument, I don't have a horse in that race particularly. It's still a fascinating conversation to watch. So check it out. If I could say his name, I'm going to say it the wrong way. Karate Jews. <laughs> I'm really sorry for saying your name wrong. <laughs> but shout out to you. I'll look it up just so I don't actually get it left out there incorrectly. I know the guy you're talking about. You shared his channel once, right? Is it not correct? Yeah. It's, it's spelled K A R A I T E. Karite? Is that right? Karite Jews for Judaism is the name yeah. of the channel. Karite. There you go. Yeah, check him out. Stick a link to his channel in, in the uh, live stream. Sometimes it's even spelled with a, with a Q and not a K. Yeah, it's spelled with a K. No, but I say sometimes it's also spelled with a Q instead of a K. With a, oh, with a Q? Yeah. Okay. There he is anyway. I've stuck his link in the... Uh, in the live stream chat if you want to go and check him out. Yeah, I saw some of his Flat Earth videos way back in the day. When you hear a, a, a Jew and a Christian arguing, it's really quite fascinating because a lot of their sources are the same, which to me is quite fascinating. It's just the different interpretations that people have about the exact same text. Truly fascinating. Yeah. That's like like hard. like we do with the ballers about the same earth? Yeah, but well, we're typically we're dealing with before. scientific evidence. It's a lot more cut and dry here than it is for him. Yeah, when when I went into his head. chat, he he had he had mentioned that he gets a lot of hate because uh there are not According to him, there are not a lot of Jews that are openly flat Earth out there. So he say he gets he does get a lot of hate for it. It's like, so, but he is a big fan of the show, and I told him he said he was trying he would try to get on one day. He said he didn't know how, so I told him to get Discord and see if he can find a way to get on. So we'll see if he can one day. I don't know the guy's name, but he certainly seems to know his stuff. And in the debates he has in a religious context, they're always really, um, what's the word? You know, polite, well-mannered, nicely structured. Things like that. Anybody else seen any good channels recently? Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to shout out Anaconda Malt Liquor then, who's at 963 subscribers. So very close to the magical 1,000 subscriber mark. 
So he's also one of my channel members, he's a lion. But uh, check out Anaconda Malt Liquor 17. Go and subscribe to him. Hopefully we can get him him or her. I don't actually know if it's him or her. But get him up to 1,000 subscribers. I'm on my way to do that. <laughs> Shout out to the name Anaconda Malt Liquor. <laughs> I like that. Anaconda Malt Liquor 17. Yeah, yeah I'll, shout out, I'll shout out the Mike Helmick channel. I've been a long follower of him. He's a flat earther Christian. Mike who? Helmick. Oh, Mike Helmick. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his. Gleam from the chat. Hey, have have you seen Simon Dan's new video? I've debunked his second point, as it is 100% barrel distortion, that he is touting as curve. Curve of what, though, Gleam? I'll come back to that. But I have a science paper which shows impossible. Mm, fair enough. I had this argument all yesterday. Did was, Go on, Flatside. All he did was he took a, a photo of the, of the C, and then he compressed the photo from left to right. And then he calls it C. It's got curve. <laughs> right. It's a bit like Red Rhetoric did when... Um, Ranty caught him. Exactly. It's just Shout out to Emma UK for the super more. chat. So yesterday, Gleam, I don't know if you caught the show, but Paul brought up the same thing. So we just not yesterday, day before yesterday, we're discussing with a chap called Richard his claim that high altitude SR seventy one pilots see Earth curve. Now the argument then from Paul's perspective was to say, well, no, what they're seeing is essentially the same as you're saying, barrel distortion or lens distortion. But my argument was, barrel distortion or lens distortion of what? The not actual location where the sky appears to meet the ground that they claim is a physical edge? Because if it's physically bending and you're seeing the edge of the sphere, then you're seeing the edge of the sphere bending. But that's not what the horizon is. It's as described, although it wasn't aired in the live show, on the pre-show, subscribe to Data Nathan Oakley channel, link below. Um, we were discussing... It's actually that, how you've you've got this hijacking of a not actual location that violates the law of non-contradiction and the law of identity. It cannot be both a not actual location and a physical edge of a sphere. So if you're looking at something and claiming it's bending, you're essentially admitting that that's a physical edge for boats to go over and obscure buildings and to bend at 80,000 feet or whatever height he says. Well, no, it isn't a physical edge. We don't have a physical sphere edge. The not actual location. Not that I'm moaning at you, Gleam, but you know, I just think we need to move on past saying, well, no, it's not bending, it's barrel distortion. It's like, what are we claiming is or isn't bending? A not actual location. A not physical edge. Debunked. No longer capable of being claimed to be a physical, actual location. You don't live on a sphere with an edge obstructing things. The horizon is not a sphere edge. So I don't care what anybody says in regards to Horizon and rising to altitudes that you... No, I don't care. Not an actual location. Horizon dropping when you rise in altitude from the other side of the argument. Don't care. Not an actual location. Horizon bending at 120,000 feet, but actually it's the, that stuff is flat. No, don't care. You're talking about a not actual location. Hello. I was enjoying the sounds of zero, zero rebuttals coming our way, but go ahead, Armin. No, I just wonder, it's so really silent, I'm not used to this. Like, was Thursday yesterday so heavy that everybody's being so silent today? Well, Paula in chat's asking, what is the image on the screen that's currently being viewed? It's the Isle of Man overhead view. So we had a LiDAR scan that was then r blender rendered into that particular image. So the centre dot is Anthony Riley, Sleeping Warrior, at St. B's. Let's just pause it. This is St. B's. This is a distance of 31 miles to this point. This point here is where Macord Lighthouse is. This is the north end of the Isle of Man. The reason it's sort of sketched out is because it's very low to sea level. And these are the slightly higher lands on the Isle of Man. So this is the floaty land that Anthony saw, this section here. This section here would be the 
map called Lighthouse, and as you pan left in the image, you're looking further and further down, apparently further and further over the curve as you look at a greater and greater distances. But it's like I described it as like looking like an almond. But yeah, this is St. Bees. That's the Isle of Man. This is the overhead model. Overhead view of the blender model. Well, you know what? In a way, this whole issue about the the horizon and the horizon, right? Them calling it the the globe edge, as it were, or presuming that that effect, that visual effect, is a geometrical element, is the biggest misconception in the first place. You know, it's not because that it would be more likely to just call it the the edge of the hill. Because that is what more what it would be like, like looking over a hill. But the horizon effect, that's just completely separate. Yeah, that's it it is it. not a geometrical feature. So, yeah, the joke is, yeah, what, what's that horizon doing behind the horizon? But the joke is, is that it's it's not possible. The, the, the first supposed horizon is a fictional creation in the first place. Exactly. I had to explain it to my wife yesterday with the difference between the horizon and a geometric location. So, um, so I said to her, if you've got you're at the bottom of a hill and you're looking at the top of the hill, this is actually the starting point of this is an Anthony Riley example. So you're looking at the top of the hill, and your mate's house is just on the other side of the hill. Is there ever a circumstance where you see your mate's house appearing to seem like it's at the top of the hill, projected up from behind the hill? Well, that's their explanation for looming. Now take that one step further and say, have you ever been at the bottom of a hill, looked at the top edge of the hill, not only seen your mate's house projected up, but the top of the hill behind the house that's projected up to the top of the hill? <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. Doesn't happen. Can't happen. It's a geometric impossibility. This breaks the globe. I, li I like that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we've got all this silence. There's no response to this. Say that slower one more time, Nathan, just so it could sink in. That was beautiful. Say again. Say that analogy that you shared with your wife one more time, but slower. So It was so beautiful. I want everyone to just enjoy it again. Fine. You're standing and you're looking at the top of a hill. You can see the crest of the hill from your viewpoint. On the other side of the hill, beyond your view, because there's a hill in the way, is your friend's house. Now, the assertion that we have looming is the assertion that that house projects itself up to sit at the top edge of the hill. So you can see the house, you can see the hill in the way, but the house, the house can still be seen even though there's a hill in the way. That would be the explanation that they use when they say 7 over 6 hour looming has bought this lighthouse, oil rig, clock, whatever, from beyond the hill, behind the earth curve, the same principle. Well, if you then take that one step further, you then have your mate's house projected up to the top edge of the hill that you can see but the hill that you can see is now behind the house that's projected up nonsense can't happen geometric impossibility that's what they've currently got with this black swan there's no rebuttal to it it's an impossibility looming doesn't whoever's typing them. we could hear you sorry so there we go excellent Excellent, Nathan. Excellent. Ian Adams says, does the hill loom? Crying, laughing face. No. <laughs> the hill's the obstruction that the building behind is apparently loomed up to. That's what looming is. Even though they don't ever prove it, they claim it. But that doesn't solve the problem of a horizon being beyond where it's supposed to be obscuring. You can't loom mm. the horizon above the horizon. Hey, Nathan, maybe yes. the problem could be solved by just pouring a lot of methane on that hill. Maybe it'll work then. And if it turns out it doesn't, you can always just light a fire after. I'm going to slightly Lower paraphrase Godzilla's super chat. It says, I saw the horizon looming over the horizon, looming over the horizon, looming over the horizon, looming over the horizon, till I finally saw my own backside. Well, I would add, with a horizon behind it. 
Uh, this is going to be a we, we common already show. Got, <laughs> we already got infinite refraction. Soon we're going to get infinite looming. It's just around the corner. I like, I like the dude in no, the background laughing you, his head off. Chocolate, did you put that laugh track on purpose? <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> it's like he works at a pub or something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. We just have fun at work. <laughs> That's good to hear. No, it's it's more than infinite refraction, so you can see <laughs> around, around the globe eternally. So you could, it's like looking in a mirror, mirroring in on itself, but slightly different. And you can just see your backside forever, looking over the curve. Or maybe it's, it's just rectangular thing. looping, and you're just looking in a straight line forever. I don't know. You pick. Go ahead. Globosexual. No, I just said sorry. It's like um, mirror feedback. That's what Owen was trying to say, I think. Mm, not really. Video feedback, something else, but yeah. And I said mirror feedback. Mirror feedback. That's what it's called. That's what it's called when two mirrors uh, face each other, and you see that like like that inf infinite sort of a uh, mirror like thing, whatever yeah, that yeah. illusion is. Sure, I know. I knew what you were talking about. Mirror feedback. I was more. Yeah. Having or a dig when at... you present your own YouTube page. I was more having a dig at the more yeah. than or greater than if you're Ruhif, infinite, greater than infinite. Hmm, fascinating terminology that. Ooh, according to Ivan Van Veen, I need to give him a course about Euclidean geometry. Interesting. Why? Well, Nathan, I just did a real basic pencil sketch of your uh, description of Anthony's hill. And basically, if the hill between you and your friend's house is blocking your friend's house, and we'll call that hill A. And then, according to them, the house is loomed. And then that same <clears throat> hill A is behind the house. Then that means we have reverse looming, according to them. Well, you've just made that term up. But yes, maybe. <clears throat> That's ridiculous in itself. They would have to go there. They would have to say it's a reverse hill looming appearance. Don't give them too many ideas. No, it's okay. They can't demonstrate it. But the whole point is that's how crazy they're going to go. It's like Zinder came on. He had to be on some medication to even talk about it so he could forget um, how he can't defend it. He sounded like he was on something. Hi, is this Flat Earth Debate? It is. Yes. Hey, Chris. Hey, is Chris Globehead here? Hey, Chris oh, Globehead. No. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Good to have you. What's up, Chris? Hey, I haven't been here in a while. Nathan, I thought I'd join him on my way to work, but I, I've been, I do listen still, of course. I, I do jump on Jose's every once in a while or wherever. Mm -hmm. I've been on Ranty's once recently just to talk some things. But yeah, so I just wanted to add a couple things that you guys mostly talk about but you know from my perspective of kind of an outsider as far as this show goes but um you know the double talk lately the walkbacks is just for me the most telling part of recent you know discussions around like well for example the horizon the horizon talk of you know two three years ago horizon's a physical location it's there we see it you know um it's the edge of the sphere. They're all walking that back and saying, oh, no, no, it's always been, you know, um, an apparent horizon and it's an optical phenomenon. And of course, it all it all depends on your height and this and that. Um, but I guarantee if you pulled up, you know, Rumpus talking about it, even just say six months ago, a year ago, you know, it's the hard, it's the bleeding edge of the sphere. 
Um, so the walk back that they have to do with these observations of like the one foot at 10 mile platform stuff, right? They, they realize that they can no longer keep the same tired old, you know, yeah, it's the, it's the edge. It's, that's it, man. That it's physical. It's right there. Just look at it. Um, they can't do that anymore. So those have been, those have been really fun for me to listen to and, and just listen to them get pummeled. Yeah. Claiming it's the matrix because it doesn't match their model. This photo isn't real. It's just in a computer simulation. No, it's a photo of a reality that we actually experience. This was part of a video. No, no, my model's real. We're on a globe. The fact this picture doesn't match my computer simulation means the picture's the computer simulation. It's the Matrix. <laughs> I haven't heard the Matrix argument <laughs> yet, but I think I heard Chocolate say someone said that the other day. So if, that, if that's true, that's just... Yeah, Rumpus. Hilar hil hilarity and insanity at the same time. Yeah, Rumpus appreciates that he's got an argument. We, we could pick out any number of debates from number 70 to number 200, where he's very much describing the physicality of the edge that's blocking the lighthouse in the distance. Now, it's very much a physical edge back in those debates. Now it's, oh, it's probably the Matrix because it doesn't match my model. Because at least Rumpus appreciates that he knows he's got a physical edge he's got to reify. And it can't do that. So he's just going to say, oh, well, alternative isn't that it's changed the R value, isn't that it's super looming infinite more than refraction. It's the Matrix, because there isn't an explanation for it. All the people who watch Rumpus, like, for example, Dawn Treader, or whatever Rumpus says, well, Rumpus says it's the Matrix because he hasn't got an answer. So they all look to Rumpus to see what his explanation is, and he hasn't got one. Oh, well, he could take his Matrix explanation. You're all just in a virtual reality, fundies. Because your model in a computer doesn't match a photo reality. Hey, Chris, uh, if you go to Ranty's channel, he's got it. It's a two hour, 45 minute debate between Rumpus, Ranty and Sleeping Warrior. And just scroll to the last 15 minutes. That's where he says it's the Matrix because he's just dying. <laughs> okay, yeah, I haven't heard that. I'll, I'll check that out. But it's been fun, right? I think it's been fun for, for all of us listening and and participating in some of the certain shows and things talking about it i was on sean g's the other day and like i say i'm in my car driving so i don't i can't present visuals but we've all seen the picture of what looks like a float the floaty boat right and they say oh look it's looming and it's that sailboat kind of in the distance on the ocean and it looks like it's floating right but we've all seen it we've all analyzed it we've all seen the the anal analysis by mick west even so we know that it's not really looming or even fata morgana it's just the fact that you can't see quote unquote the top of of the horizon of the water because it's been refracted or mirrored right on the sky we've all seen that photo so i was on sean g's and, and he had stingray on there you know supposed 3d 3d expert and picture ex, uh, image expert you had sean you had all these ballers address all these people on there saying against me saying look this is looming this boat is behind the curve but it's loomed up like oh what are you saying chris that it's floating and i was like well, no it's just I explain the same thing, you know, it's, it's the refracted sky is refracted on the water or it's it's mirrored. Or, you know, I said, honestly, I really don't even know this how this effect works, guys. But that's basically what's happening. And we went on for 10 or 15 minutes and they were just ribbing me about being wrong. I'm so stupid. Like, of course, that's that's looming. Like, what are you saying? So then I sent them the the Mick West debunk analysis. And even Mick West says, no, it's just, you know, he does the color inversions where you can see the you know, what appears to be the, the hard horizon and the color inversions even, which is way behind the boat, kind of like the latest platform um, image. And Sean finally admitted, oh, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, this isn't looming. You're right, Chris. So. Yeah, I, I was going to say, did they really say the boat's behind the curve? Because you could clearly see the, I mean, maybe not clear, but you can see the horizon in the back. Right. <laughs> What's wrong with these guys, man? Get it, they, get it, they good, guys. <laughs> they don't want to see it. They, you can see it, and that, even in that image without color inversions, you can see it. It's not, it's not super clear. It's not even as clear as the platform video, but you can see it. They just don't want to see it. They can't see it because it destroys their model. Then they have to go to a refracted model or you know a, a special call it model, um, and it just, it's just, it's yeah, just infin infinite power. refraction, bro. Gre right. Greater than infinite refraction. That's where we're at. Right. Next time it'll be greater than infinite super mega refraction. <laughs> so I might make a quick video on that, um, just showing the double speak and about how they were so confident that I was wrong and they're right. And they've analyzed it and they know it. 
And then within five minutes, I show them uh, the Mick West analysis, and they have to, to walk back everything that they said. It's pretty funny. Oops. Yeah, if you watch QE's last, um, the, uh, I think it was the, the Globe Killer, uh, some, the latest edition of it, he goes over that Mick West uh, photo with the looming and you can see how the horizon is in the back and I mean it's just it's a joke <laughs> these guys right. don't even know they're left and they're right anymore are you talking about the collector's edition Chaka thank you yes oh, that's okay. the one Yeah, does one describe our blood pressure? Because we're obviously nice and calm, or as I put it in the pre-show, sitting pretty. Because we've got an undebunkable globe demolition under our belt now. But it doesn't really make for great conversation when there is no response, because we just sit here with, like, protracted silences, pointing out <laughs> they've got nothing. I mean, I don't mind oh, that. They'll be... They're scrambling to come up with something, so it's short-lived, the silence. It's enjoyable right now, but uh, you'll, you'll get busy soon. Sure, it's the calm before the storm, before they come up with a new heliocentric smear of bullshit, an adjustment to their calculation that says, no, 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 this is a new effect we've now discovered within our model that explains it perfectly. Well, it's, a, well, it's already happening on Discord when I took the same argument that QE presented to Discord and everyone saw it in the context in which QE presented it. They were the Globers were willing to change their radius on the on at that moment. <laughs> we'll just make it a bigger globe. No problem. We can make the globe physically bigger. Just stick a pump in the ground and inflate it. And then yeah, chocolate it. was there. The chocolate was there, and and it's it's easy for me to say what happened. But let me give you the way it happened because it it it's very telling. Uh, so this is the guy. He's saying. Okay, so we got our model wrong. So it's bigger than what it is. We'll just change our model. Model Mark 2. Mark 1 was just wrong. We said that was what Earth was, but now we've got the new version. That's what Earth is. And if that's wrong, we'll change it to Mark 3 and that'll be what Earth is. Problem being that there's a point to the radius value. None of the other measurements and claim to be proofs the interplanetary motion measurements none of that works anymore if you change r so you can't just change r well that's why mc tune has the pseudo scientist with the pseudo scientist statement says well science doesn't prove anything it just proves what's wrong <laughs> but if you change the size the radius of earth won't they just push the whole model out of the flunk nothing will work well you miss you miss the the violation of law of non-contradiction. MC Toon says it doesn't prove anything, but then he says in the same sentence, it proves what it isn't. So yeah, it does prove something. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that is MC for you, though. <laughs> yeah, a, that, that sounds like the, the world is flat and it's a globe. <laughs> That's what that sounds like to me. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that makes it even worse. Uh, we were talking, uh, Adam and I and QE, and we just dwelled on the, the comment. So the comment is, science does improve things. Okay, so the great minds that you refer to all the time came up with a method how not to prove something. Is that what you're saying? Why don't we just go back, like couple years or a year or two when they were saying there's all this science for the globe science proves that we live on a globe yeah 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 that <laughs> we heard that a whole lot all of a sudden things done changed <laughs> you don't you don't need to you don't need to rewind chocolate just listen to mc tune talk after he said that statement with adam then he went and referenced science well mc tune is so much time is trying to give me an hypothesis for gravity, and every time he doesn't give me an hypothesis, he says it isn't an hypothesis. 
let me make a claim for the ballers. This is what took place. My dad is always wrong. But I went to my dad for advice, and he was right. <laughs> That's actually very good. Share your pain, fundies. Did Nick West, uh, did you guys hear Nick West's explanation about uh, if you're too close to the, let's say, ground, there's like more refraction or something? Here, let me share something. Like, I found something on Gem Pandas. I'm going to share it quick. Okay, while you're doing that, just shout out light energy. What distance limit of looming will flat earthers accept? Looming doesn't explain the horizon being in a different position. You can't loom the horizon above the horizon. So there is no limit. In previous terms, they'd apply whatever limit brought something beyond the curve back, but that isn't applicable here. They've already applied, or tried to apply, more than, more than infinite looming. More than infinite, according to Ruhif. Right, and so on the, um, the Mick West calculator, you're right, it says, you know, at some point, they added the note, oh, can't do these observations... <clears throat> I forget how they word it. It's kind of worded weirdly, like like close to the horizon, which doesn't not really applicable, make sense. What is... Not applicable for observations close to the horizon. Well, what, their model doesn't work when we take a picture close to the horizon. Well, you can just paraphrase that. Their model doesn't work. So when they say, oh, well, this picture is not applicable. Yeah, it is. It's still a picture. I can take a picture from wherever I like, whenever I like. The fact that your model doesn't work with it is irrelevant to me because we don't live on your model. I can still take a picture, though, from very low to the ground. What's that? It breaks your model, so we're not going to apply those to your model. Oh, right. So your model doesn't work. But the thing is, they have, like, an excuse, but they can't even explain it. Basically, okay. if you have my screen up, it says, uh, the closer they are, the less accurate it is. The problem is, it's quite complicated, so you can't really give a simple explanation. You just have to believe, <laughs> I guess. Oh, right. So they can apply refraction without any measurements being applied. But then when something doesn't work in their model, they just leave a disclaimer that it doesn't work. And we have to accept it because it's very complicated. No, no, I press the shutter on my camera and it takes a picture. Nothing complicated about it. I don't have to compare it to any models. I don't have to worry about why the models don't work or the disclaimers about why the model doesn't work. I just look at the picture. That's it. What's that? You must compare the pictures to your model. And we must accept that because the model doesn't work with these pictures, that the model's pictures analysis is suddenly irrelevant. No, irrelevant to us. Completely irrelevant. To you, it just should tell you your model doesn't work. To me, I don't care what your model says. Or that your model see, points out it doesn't work. Yeah, you see, the problem is the observation just kills their model. So they have to come up with something. Well, it's I mean, more... That sounded to me like a blatant concession of we just don't have an explanation for what's going on. Yeah, it's more of the walk back that I was mentioning earlier. It's, it's oh, look, here's our model. It works. And then we find something that doesn't work. And now they have, they're having to add disclaimer after disclaimer after disclaimer on, on their – they're amending their model. Um, and then, by the way, I'm not sure – I think that was Righteous Force who was talking. I'm not sure. But even if that's the case, even if you went by that rule um, – the can't be close to the horizon or out low to the ground. There's another ob observation of that same of those same platforms at 35 feet um, that shows this you know a similar result as far as the horizon being too far. So if they then say, well, 35 feet isn't high enough, right? Then it's just you know at what point are you going to stop obfuscating and 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 changing your models? Um, it's just it's insanity. So um, by the way, guys, I have to go. Thanks for letting me speak a little bit, Nate, and I'll talk to you guys later. Pleasure having you. Later. Hey, Ranty. Hello, how is everyone? So, Ranty? Yeah, it's all good. It's Tony been in. Hold on, Fuzzy Ewok's trying to get a word in. He's on mute. We have to go to ludicrous refraction. Ludicrous refraction? Standard refraction is much, much too low. We've got to go straight to ludicrous refraction. We've already, we've already got a, a quite embarrassing term for it. Greater than infinite refraction. Greater than. <laughs> so thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for putting a wrap on with ludicrous, though. 
Ah, boom, boom. Wow. Greater than infinite. No, I asked someone six. the other day in the Discord. It's like if if somehow someone was able to see New York from Paris, would someone then just say, "No, no, no, that's just super ridiculous, extreme nonsense"? You, at you what have, point does it get to? You'll never see England from Paris. Number one, because there's a couple of countries in the way. But if if, if it was possible, but right, you you know, I know what you're saying. I'm just being facetious. If you could see them, which you can't, because they're too small. So no, you're never going to have atmospheric yeah, but conditions. If we somehow came up with a picture, they would just say, "Oh no, that's extreme, ludicrous." Probably. Yeah, like that was just what? How many miles does it have to take to someone to say, "Oh no, no I guess." Well, infinite. We had this a couple of years ago. You know, with the right amount of zoom and the clear enough day, you can see your own ass in a telescope, which is to say they will bring your own ass back from behind you with looming if they need to. Infinite looming's already been applied. I mean, this. I'm glad everyone's got a grasp of this, but the, the, the newest argument is not a draw anymore. We no longer need to listen, listen to their nonsense about infinite looming and seeing your own ass in a telescope to justify things that you shouldn't see in their model. That's no longer necessary. The horizon is their geometric starting point. It's a physical sphere that we're supposed to be living on. Now, if that physical sphere edge is no longer where it's supposed to be, it isn't a physical edge. You can't loom the horizon above the horizon. So looming isn't a get out for this argument anymore. The argument ends here. Now, I, I'm certain that lots of people haven't appreciated that yet. But this is the death of the globe. It ends here. There's no mathematical get out. There's no, well, how much looming, which is what we're being asked, light, uh, uh, the most recent super chatter, I think it was light wave, light energy, sorry, is asking exactly the same thing as you. Well, wh wh how much looming can we apply? Well, no, we're at the point where they're having to apply more than infinite over 6R because they can't answer the question. But the infinite over 6R, as ludicrous as it might seem, they're only giving us that so we can focus on it. Oh, it's stupid. So that they get back to the draw argument. Well, you're just applying infinite over 6R now. It's got ridiculous. But that isn't a rebuttal. And, and I want people who are watching this to appreciate that. Them just going to the nth degree with refraction doesn't address this problem. Yeah, I just want to say that me and Tony are working on something um, that might also help uh, FE in the coming months and years. We're working on something that's clearly going to debunk Soundly's work, uh, but it's it's without question um, very very obvious to see once we've put it all together and we've uh, formulated these um, not just ideas but also um, what the Globers would consider um, their own proofs and using it in their their proofs with their um, observations and stuff and how we can turn uh, Soundly's work into actually flat Earth proofs. There we go. I look Brandy? forward to it. Yeah. Would you show that meme you made earlier? Uh, which one? That's smart because even their own versions of their model don't even work. Like from the inside out, it, it's they have no leg. Like... The one I put in uh, the hangout. Must be, yeah. 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 Must be. Okay. One sec. Uh, that will be this one. If I can get it on the center of the screen so that you can all see. There you go. I was just thinking about the ludicrous refraction. Somebody needs to come up with a meme from Lord Helmet from Spaceballs doing ludicrous, you know, how they said ludicrous speed and doing the plaid and making it refraction or something like that. That would be funny if somebody could do that. I'm not good at memes, but that would be good. What, they're going the flat? I didn't understand your question. What? Uh, you you wanted the meme, right? So they're not going the plat, they're going the flat. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ludicrous refraction, <laughs> the ludicrous speed. Another <laughs> quick shout out to Alexander, who says to all flat earthers who are into debating with globers. Oh, I'll just move my screen around so it's a bit more pretty. To all flat earthers who are into debating with globers. Have you ever felt guilty for pushing them over the edge into some kind of mental illness? Question mark. Don't feel sorry. 
It's their own choice. Thank you very much for the super chat, Alexander. Getting a few comments about your show today, Arwin. Darkman says, Arwin show today, crying face. Sorry, what? I just finished lunching pretty much. I just made the same comment I made earlier, but someone from the chat made the same point that your show is a bit wacky today. Not wacky, bit a bit out there. I don't see why people have a problem with it. I didn't say I got a problem. What's wacky about it? I, j I just described things. Some of which are about, yeah, in intuitive decision making and, and all that. So, yeah, it's a bit ethereal. That's not wacky. Okay, wrong word. My bad. Well, compared to sports and weather, everything we're talking about is wacky. Right. Brandon says, how is this picture possible should be the first question you ask any baller who comes on the show. Right on. I mean, it's been incorporated into the housekeeping question. Any evidence of a physical geometric edge? So, yeah, it's definitely part of the questions we're asking now on a regular basis, Brandon. Thank you very much for the super chat. Let's see if any ballers would come on there. Say again, Flatsoid. That's if any ballers would dare to come on there. Well, not, not with Rumpus telling us is the only answer is the Matrix. What have, they, what have they got to give us? Jokes about the sphere edge. The best part is that, that, that that's come from Rumpus, who I think for most of them are regarded as one of the best they got. <laughs> and to him, it's the Matrix. That's the only explanation for what's going on in that picture. Awesome. Enjoy that, ballers. And with that, I'll say if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley 1980 Live, then this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. As I say, stay tuned if you're watching on the premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!